Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor from Johnson County Community College. In this short screencast, we're going to go back to javascript.info, the modern JavaScript tutorial, and skip ahead to part two, where we connect what we've learned in JavaScript to a web page and actually start manipulating the web page. Now, so far, if you're following my screencasts, we've gone through part one, 1.1 through 1.3, as well as 2.1 through 2.7. After we work a little bit more with the web page, I'm going to come back and finish 2.8 through 2.16, section three, much of section four, and much of section five for my JavaScript one class. It's a two credit class. But look at all the rest of the topics that this author has developed for us. JavaScript.info is a comprehensive look at JavaScript. It is my firm belief, however, that until you get the fundamentals down very solid, there's no point in going into the advanced subjects. Now, at my school, we also have a JavaScript 2 class, which is another two credits, and a JavaScript 3 class, which is another two credits. So all told, you can get six credits of JavaScript and learn many of these concepts. But for right now, I'm going to skip ahead to part two, the browser, and make sure that we can connect what we know about JavaScript right now to a web page and start interacting with a web page because I personally feel that's much more satisfying than just writing the code and seeing it run through alerts or console.logs. So we're going to go into the browser part two, 1.1, and learn more about how JavaScript specifically talks to the document. When we go into this section, the author shows us this little diagram which demonstrates that the window object is the default object. And JavaScript is like all modern programming languages in that it's an object-oriented language. So everything that the language can do, all the methods and all the properties are connected to an object. That default object happens to be the window without the document. Now, the JavaScript language was initially created for web browsers. That's very important to understand because it helps explain why the language works as it does. For example, why the language is loosely typed and why there's automatic type conversion behind the scenes, which might take a lot of processing cycles for the language to deal with. Yet when you think about this language responding to a user in a web page, that process is pretty slow. So we can lean on the language to do some of the back-end processes, such as type conversion and garbage collection, that maybe some of the other programming languages require the developer to specifically handle. So the JavaScript language was initially created for web browsers, and that's what we're going to focus on right now. Over here in my JavaScript file, test4.js, which I've got connected to this little template file in this script, I've got three statements. And these three methods, alert, confirm, and prompt, have no object dot in front of them. They are methods of this default window object. So when you see a method without an object in front of it, you know that it's a method of this default window object. And I could write it window.alert, window.confirm, window.prompt, and it would run the same way. But you very rarely see the window dot object written in from that statement because after all the window is the default object and let's just see how this runs in a web page i'm going to open up a new web page control o open up my template file and that first statement that first alert runs hi world my second statement runs confirm can you hear me now confirm method gives me an okay or a cancel button i can grab that value true or false if i use a variable over there on line six I'm just going to go ahead and OK through this right now. And then the third statement runs, prompt, what is your name? And this is one method of getting information from the user into your program. I'm going to put my name in, click OK. My name was not saved because I'm not saving the value of that prompt anywhere. But I could declare a variable, var username, and set that equal to that prompt, and then grab whatever the user types into that prompt but these are three methods of the window object. And now I want to talk about this word object. All an object is is a container. And what that container can hold are properties, values, or methods, which are things the object can do. We will talk about objects much more specifically later. But here's where learning JavaScript and learning any other language can really diverge. 
in most every other language, you have to set up your environment. You have to set up the objects that you're going to work with. In JavaScript, just because you're working in a web page environment, you get two rich objects. The window object with different methods available to it, such as alert, confirm, and prompt. And the document, the document object contains all of the elements on the web page, all of the text inside those elements, all of the styles on the web page. So when you learn JavaScript, you're already working in a very rich environment full of all kinds of objects that you can manipulate. Yes, sometimes we want to create our own unique objects or arrays or functions in JavaScript. But you've already got the window and you've already got the document, which is the web page itself, and you can start applying your JavaScript to those objects. So that makes learning JavaScript very different than learning these other languages where you don't have a rich environment of objects already set up and available to you. As we scroll down and read more about this lesson, the author talks about the document object model, the DOM, which is simply a representation of all the elements in the web page. And that's where we're really driving the bus because we really want to manipulate the web page and not just show alerts and confirmation messages and dialog boxes to the user. We really want to work on the web page. And that requires us to understand that the web page is represented to JavaScript through this DOM model and through this type of syntax. So here's our object, the document object, the body object inside the document object, which is a child of the document, the style object of the body object. Again, style is a child of body, body is a child of document. And then the background property, we want to set that to red. I'm just going to copy that statement inside my s4.js file, save and refresh and see how this statement runs. So I get high world alert from statement five. I get the confirmation from statement six. I get a prompt for my information, which is from statement seven. And then watch what happens when statement eight runs. Now we're actually manipulating the web page. For the first time, instead of just putting dialog boxes through the window object, we're actually talking to the specific document. Now, if you want to see the DOM, just right click inspect, and go to the Elements tab. Styles are, are below here. The Elements tab will explain all of the objects and indent them in the current DOM very well for you. Perhaps you have your HTML well written and well indented, and you can see the DOM clearly in your HTML. Even if all this code was left justified, which makes it much, much harder to read, I'm going to save and I'm going to refresh. The great thing about the Elements tab is it always shows you a very nice indented representation of the DOM. You can always see the elements in your HTML page and the DOM representation in this Elements tab very clearly. Of course, when we're writing JavaScript, we mainly leave the console tab open because we're looking for JavaScript error messages and or console logs that we may have used. But I want to point out that the Elements tab will show you the DOM, and that's really where we're driving the bus with this section of the modern tutorial. We want to manipulate that web page with JavaScript. That's its primary and initial purpose in life. But once we understand about the document object model and how to talk to the document in our JavaScript, we can manipulate the actual web page. And to me, that's where it gets really fun. Thank you.